All right, today we're going to be going over my favorite S&D strategy of Call of Duty Vanguard, and that comes on Berlin offense. It's one that Kismet and I drew up around stage three-ish, and it was a really, really fun play because if the enemy team was able to take the bait fully, it was a super cool looking play. And so I'll, I'll take you into it right here. What would happen was Kiz, who was our main bomb carrier for most of our searches, was number three here. In this round, he would not be taking bomb though. Um, what we would do is we would have him go over towards B side, maybe throw a stunner or nade over towards docks just to sell it a little bit more, but also more importantly, to deter anyone that might be playing low docks and trying to get inside the B room pretty quickly. So that was pretty important. And what he would do was he would come over here past post, slide onto the tank and then slide onto bomb, just how like teams would do when they were going B like fully. But what we want to do is expose that and, and really abuse that because, you know, if a team saw that a player was fully committing by sliding to the tank first and then sliding over to the bomb, that, you know, it would be a B play. It would be a full on B hit because people would really like to get the bomb down quickly because, you know, once you got the bomb down quickly on, on B site, you'd just play super safe, you know, bricks here, boxes, and it would be super hard for the defending team to clear it out. So we wanted to really abuse that. And what we did was we sent our main bomb carrier towards the tank and then towards the bomb. What we, we didn't have the bomb though. So he wouldn't obviously plant. He would just play inside this room here and look towards docks. So he would be trying to look for anyone that could have seen him cross and tried to go lower docks to kill him while he was planning. So what he's doing here, he's just playing a kill straight up. He's not planning the bomb. He's not doing anything for the objective. The only thing he wants to do is stay alive as long as possible for the rest of his team. So we'll talk about the rest of the team. They would just sneak here into A main and literally just hide for a good majority of the time. What we wanted to do was hide in here, close the doors, make sure that anyone who might be pushing you know, th through A or playing on this heady or, or just straight up pushing through long wouldn't see anyone until they were able to, you know, actually see two enemies at once. And at that point they would be killed. And at that point we would just fully take on the site. So we'd have the bomb going here. We would have usually, I think it was Paco who would play secret door here. We'd have someone, you know, open and close the doors. Someone play clutch stairs and someone play outer here. And what we wanted to do is like, if anyone pushed out outer or if anyone push through long if you push through outer Paco would see him and he would help 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 from two of his teammates or if they push through long he would have two teammates on him but what we want to do is expose the fact that if there was a possibility of them fully or us fully going B that teams would try and activate and send people through a main to try and go on a quick flank so that was the whole abuse part you know we have his sitting here. He's waiting for a kill. He's just, he's not even going towards bomb. He's just straight up sitting in a corner waiting for a kill. It's all right if he dies, honestly. Cause if that means, if he dies, that means at least one person saw him on the cross and at least one person went and tried to go kill him. So that's two people that are somewhat dedicated towards B side. And from that we have it at, like at best a 3v1, 3v2 on A. That's, that's the only possibility. At that point, you just straight up crunch through A and get in the site. You know, if there's only two people there, you should be able to win the trades there. And the best thing about this was that, you know, we had another guy taking the bomb. He'd quick plant after the trades were done. And let's say they still thought bomb was at B. They have two guys. It would be really hard to retake it because you'd have, let's say, two or three guys alive for our team. Bomb down. They'd have to fully retake. So we really wanted to abuse the fact that teams were really watching this crossover and if someone would cross it was a really big tell that they would go B. and from this you know even kids let's say kids stays here and no one comes to him let's say they they realize it's a fake and they start sending people back towards a to help out you know at this point you know kids is a free play he he can activate whenever he wants let's say he wants to take a little bit of time the rest of his three teammates are here let's say trying to get into a he has a free play at that point and he can go into docks. He can flank around fully, you know, full around docks to gold. He can go through post and flank and, you know, try and play top third at that point. So at that point, once the everyone else is on A, you know, fighting and in trying to get trades, 
he's an activator who's just basically lurking if you want to use like a cs or violent terms he's just straight up lurking at that point so not only is he baiting out the rest of the enemy team he also has a free lurk if they don't come and get him so i'll play the round out for you here as you can see we have these three guys going a main really important that they shut these doors closed because if anyone who might be pushing a main sees that the doors are closed it's a more of a possibility for them to continue on and keep pushing because they don't expect people obviously to be in trains and in a main so what we did we closed the doors we're acting super sneaky all it is is a straight up bait so we're, we're baiting on both sides technically we're baiting through b here and we're baiting by just sitting a so if anyone pushes through it's a free kill for us and a free first blood so as you can see here kiz goes crosses to the tank and then crosses the bomb he number seven sees him this is the bait number six is playing low docks and from this point on these two guys they they get the realization from their teammates that they're crossing b that kids is crossing b so at that point these guys think that they have a free play by just pushing through outer pushing through a main so that's what they're gonna do they're just gonna you know they they, they don't think anyone's there obviously so what they do they push through Two real gets picked off by Paco here. He gets helped. Plus another guy, Awakening, pushes through halls. As you can see, and Krim is there right there to pick it up. So as you can see, before Krim was proning on the stairs. I'll show you that real quick. They close the door. He's now proning on the stairs. He's just waiting for contact, pretty much. Um, and then once the first kill happens, he pops up, gets the second kill on Awakening. And it's, it's a full-on bloodbath. We don't even need the bait. And they still think that Kiz has the bomb towards B. As you can see, number 6 and number 7 here, they don't obviously rotate towards A. Because they're like, oh, Kizmet's their main bomb carrier. You know, they're still probably trying to plant B. Major's like, okay, there must be a guy here. We saw him cross. He must be planning. He gets picked out here by Kiz at some point. And it's just a full-on round loss because... Number seven here, he's the one who ends up trying to rotate towards A, but Krim is still playing this long haul, and he can see out the window here. So once we get the first two kills, the round's pretty much over, but I really like the fact that, like, the bait still worked, and, you know, we tried it around in scrims a bunch of times. A lot of times, teams would just full-on, you know, wrap their A players towards the B site, and it baited them so hard, even though we only had one guy there. So that was a really cool play, and I'm, I'm super proud that it was at least able to get us a round win towards our cinderella run um yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video um another breakdown for you guys on some sd plays and i'll see you guys in the next one